So let's look at a pretty simple first order ODE. Let's solve y prime plus y equals 0 subject to y of 0 is equal to 1. And I want to first, uh, I, I can solve it using the linear technique that we've learned and the separable technique that we've learned. Uh, uh, but later I want to go ahead and solve it using the Laplace transform. But first, let's let's just pick a technique, I guess. Let's say uh, y prime equals a negative y. So I want to go after the separable technique. And then if I can write y prime as a product of uh, some function x and function y, of course, you don't see any x's, but that's fine. Um, so let's go ahead and write the y prime as dy by dx equals a minus y. And then if we separate out everything, I get dy over y equals a minus dx. Uh, we're ready to integrate. So if I integrate both sides, let's see. I get the natural log of the magnitude of y is equal to negative x plus some arbitrary constant. So uh, we look at the initial condition and it tells us that when x is 0, y is near 1. So 1 is positive. So we're really just taking a natural log of, of positive y is equal to negative x plus c. Um, let's go ahead and apply the condition. So y is 1, we'll get the natural log of 1, uh, when x is 0, so c is the natural log of 1 or just 0. So I get that the natural log of y is really just equal to a negative x. And if I exponentiate both sides, I get that y is equal to e to the negative x. Okay. So that sort of guides me a bit, and now I want to actually look at this guy using the Laplace transform. So let's take the DE, uh, y prime plus y is equal to zero, and just take the Laplace transform of the entire DE, y prime plus y. Uh, so I guess I could do that on the left side, left side and the right hand side. Um, the Laplace transform of zero. Of course, it's just going to be zero on the right-hand side. Um, so the Laplace transform of the y prime, uh, if we look at an earlier video, we'll get s y of s minus y zero, and then the Laplace transform of y plus we're just saying is y s is equal to zero, and we should be able to factor out a ys from these two terms. So if I factor out the ys, I'm left with an s plus 1. And let's bring the y0, or y evaluated at 0 to the right hand side. Okay, so our initial condition tells us what y evaluated at 0 is. We know that that's just 1 from the initial condition. And so now we're ready to solve for our ys, and we get 1 over s plus 1, um, which is now it should be pretty simple. Um, if I take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides, so take the inverse Laplace transform of ys, of course, that'll just give me my function y is a function of time. And I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of, I'm going to write this as 1 over s minus a minus 1. Um, remember, uh, first, we remember for convergence that s must be greater than a. And the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a or alpha uh, is always e to the a or alpha t, however you want to call it. So here, this transforms back to y of t. And the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a or 1 over s minus alpha is going to be e to the alpha t. So I get a minus t.